Welcome back everyone. Let's learn some more about calculus two. Specifically, let's do some more examples of finding area between the curves. Uh, in this example, we want to find the area between the curve y equals x to the one half power. That is the usual square root function. Um, you can see that in front of you illustrated in yellow right here. And let's also find the area between the square root function and the, then the function y equals x cubed, uh, your standard cubic function, uh, which you can see illustrated here in green. Um, let's call, let's call, because you know, sometimes it's nice to give them names here. Uh, instead of y equals the square root, we'll call this f of x equals the square root. And instead of y equals x cubed, we'll call that g of x equals x cubed right there. And so you can see this illustrated in the picture. Now, unlike some of the, the, the previous example we saw here, they didn't tell you what the bounds are here. What's the boundary of this problem? x equals a, x equals b. What are my a and b value? Um, they didn't tell you these bounds because it's implicit in the description of these functions. Uh, we're looking for a finite region who has a finite area. And when you look at the graph of these two functions, the square root of x and x cubed, we can see that there's only one natural region bounded by these two functions, um, which you can see illustrated here in light blue. And so we're trying to find the area of this region. And so even though they didn't tell us what the bounds are, we can infer from the description of the region uh, what the bounds are going to be. And so again, this can be helpful when we have the picture in front of us. You could try drawing yourself or using a graphing calculator. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you can always use desmos.com. Uh, it's a free graphing calculator. It uh, works pretty well, actually. That you might, we'll actually probably see it in some future videos as well. Uh, desmos.com, it offers a free graphing calculator. Feel free to use it um, in your studies and your homework. I think it'll be a great use to you here. So we can see from this picture that it seems like there's an intersection right here. I would guess from the graph that's going to be 0, 0, the origin. Um, and it would also appear that there's some other intersection right here. By my graph, it, it looks like 1, 1. And you could check that these, these two points are, in fact, points of intersection. But what if you didn't know where they intersected? What if your drawing wasn't very accurate or, or you struggled to find them? You can always find these intersections algebraically. And this is the preferred method I would suggest to find here, that if you want to find the intersection, assuming you can spell the word, if you want to find the intersection of two functions, the idea is to set them equal to each other, f of x equals g of x. Set them equal to each other and solve for x. Well, f of x, remember, was the square root of x. g of x was x cubed. Um, in order to make this an easier equation to solve, I prefer to have polynomial a polynomial function. So we're going to square both sides. Square the left-hand side to get rid of the square root and square the right-hand side because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, a gander is just a boy goose in case you didn't know what that meant. Um, the square root of x squared is an x. x cubed squared, you're actually going to multiply the exponents together um, and so we get x to the sixth. And so setting this polynomial equal to zero, we get x to the sixth minus x equals zero. Uh, proceed, I mean you could try to factor this thing if you want to x, uh, you can factor out an x, then you're going to get x minus 1, um, and then like so x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to 0. Um, if I spazzed everyone out right there, that's my apologies, right? Factoring can be a little bit more challenging here. Uh, some of us might be more inclined to try this by division. If we divide both sides by x, uh, we end up with 1 equals x to the 5th. Now, be aware that if you divide by x, you're assuming x isn't equal to 0. Um, but x actually is a solution. A 0 is a solution right here. So when you divide by x, make sure you keep track that x equals 0 is a possibility. In fact, that is one of the points of intersection uh, we saw on the graph over here, right? x equals 0. Um, and then if you have 1 equals x to the fifth, we'll take the fifth root of both sides. Uh, do that to the other side as well. And you're going to see that x equals 1 is the other real solution. And that's going to correspond to this one right here. So we found our bounds, x equals 0 and x equals 1. Uh, it takes a little bit more effort to find them because it was implicit with the description. But once we have it, we're ready to go. To find the area between the curves, we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And we're going to take the bigger function minus the smaller function. So we take x to the 1 half. We see this from the picture that the square root is the bigger function and subtract from it x cubed, like so, dx. 
Now, before continuing, I do want to make a comment here. What if, what if I botched it? What if I put x cubed in front of x to the one half, and I, because I thought that was the bigger one. What's going to happen? Well, by reversing, by reversing the roles of x cubed and x to the one half, we actually see here that we would just get the same area, the same region, but the area is negative. So if you get a negative answer at the end of these problems, just take the absolute value. Don't fixate too much on making sure you get the right order, but uh, we do we do prefer to put the bigger one first, right? Um, so taking the antiderivative, we use the power rule right here. The one half power will increase by one, it becomes the three halves power, and then divide by three halves, the new exponent. And then x cubed, it'll upgrade to be x to the fourth over four, and then let's go from zero to one right here. Now, if you divide by the fraction three halves, that's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'll more often prefer to write this as two thirds multiplication here, x to the three halves minus x to the fourth over four, right, from zero to one. You'll see that these bounds are actually quite benign, right? When you plug in zero, because you have only powers of x, everything will disappear, that's really nice. And when you plug in the one, because powers of one are always equal to one, this thing will simplify to be two thirds minus a fourth which as far as arithmetics go is, is pretty benign, right? We do need to write a common denominator here between three and four, your least common multiple will be 12. Uh, so we'll times the first one, uh, four over four, uh, and then the second one needs to be three over three. So we end up with eight minus three twelfths. And so then we find out the area between the, ter ter the, between the, the two curves is five twelfths. Uh, let's take a look at another example here. Let's find the area enclosed by the line y equals x minus 1 and the parabola y squared equals 2x plus 6. So again, much like the last example, uh, they don't tell you the bound x equals a x equals b because it's implicit by the description here. If we were to graph these things, you see in green uh, the function y equals x minus 1, the line, I should say, y equals x minus 1 right here. Um, and then in yellow, you see the parabola y squared equals 2x plus 6. You'll notice that the, the yellow curve is not a function in the standard meaning, right? It fails the vertical line test. And that comes to the fact that you have a y squared as opposed to an x squared. This thing is a concave right uh, parabola. And that's actually not too much of a problem for us. We could try, I mean, if we wanted to, we could solve for y just by taking the square root. But the issue with that is if we take the square root, we actually get the positive square root and the negative square root. So we'd have to treat this as like a piecewise function and break it up into two integrals, which might not necessarily be the most preferable technique. Um, on the other hand, when we first talked about this area between the curve, we have this f of x minus g of x dx, but there's nothing that actually forces us to use the differential dx, right? dx gives us these uh, vertical rectangles like this. On the other hand, we could switch our focus and focus instead on horizontal rectangles like so. Um, if we do these horizontal rectangles, then the thickness of this rectangle will actually be the differential dy. So I guess what I'm saying is you are, to find areas under curves, between curves and things like that, you are welcome to integrate with respect to y instead of with respect to x if it's a little bit easier. Um, the reason that would be a better choice in this situation is that for the, for the parabola, if you solve for x, um, you'll just subtract the 6 and divide both sides by 2. We get that x equals y squared minus 6 over 3. Uh, not over 3, I'm sorry, over 2, uh, which I would simplify to be 1 half y squared minus 3 which is a pretty good quadratic function for x. And also this guy right here, you can solve for x, in which case you get x equals y plus one. That's fairly painless right there. So we can describe both of these functions in terms as x as a variable y instead of the usual y as a variable of x. And so if we do that way, we have to, we have to kind of change our perspective over here. Um, which function is bigger than the other one? And that's gonna be the one on the right because the farther along the x-axis you get, the more positive things are. So in this situation, the green function is the bigger function than the yellow one. So we're gonna take this to be, uh, we'll call the green one f of x, we'll call the yellow one g of x, and so we're gonna take f minus g uh, to find the area between the curves. 
Um, but we have to also figure out where are the boundaries points right here. We can try to see them from the graph, but again, let's try to see it algebraically what these things are. You would set the two functions equal to each other. Y squared minus six over two um, is equal to Y plus one. Um, I think I'm gonna distribute the fraction again. So we'll take one half Y squared minus three like so. Um, Let's times both sides by two. I guess no matter what I do, I don't want the fraction there. Times both sides by two. So we get y squared minus six is equal to two y plus two. If you are at all afraid of fractions, that is you suffer from a debilitating disease called ratiophobia, the fear of fractions, uh, this is a support group for you. We love you, we care about you, and nearly always we can get rid of fractions in arithmetic just by multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator we wanna get rid of. Uh, this is now a quadratic equation. Move everything to the same side. I'm going to subtract 2y and subtract 2 from both sides. Uh, this gives us y squared minus 2y minus 8 equals 0. Uh, we then want to factor this thing, or we could use the quadratic formula, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Completing the square is also an option. Uh, but we want factors of negative 8 that add up to b negative 2. And with a very quick inspection, we can see that y equals negative four and y plus two does the trick, right? Negative four times two gives us negative eight, negative four plus two gives us negative two. And so we see the two points of intersection are y equals positive four and y equals negative two, uh, which seems to look like the values we see right here. Uh, I mean, if I were to guess from the graph, one, two, three, four, five, the x coordinate looks like it's five, um, the y coordinate, I did find the y coordinate, didn't I? Uh, four and negative two. Yeah, that's not that's not a problem there. Um, where is my issue here? This one right here. Uh, I wonder if this my my scale's probably off on my y axis. Whoops, a daisy. That's probably the issue. Don't look at that. Embarrassing. Uh, but see, this this is again what emphasizes the point why I say focus on the algebra. The geometry is good to inform our intuition, but we should rely more on the algebra because we're less inclined to make mistakes such as the one you see in the video here. Um, anyways, so now that we know our bounds, let's get ready to find the area. The area between the curves, uh, we're going to take the integral, which remember before we said we're going to take uh, f minus g. And so the bigger function was the linear function, y plus 1. And then we're going to subtract from it the quadratic function, 1 half y squared uh, minus 3. Was it a minus 3 or a plus 3? I've already forgotten. Uh, it was a minus 3, like so. We're going to integrate with respect to y. And so next thing to pay attention to are the boundaries, right? This is what we had to find, this y coordinates. If you're integrating with respect to y, the bounds over here need to be y coordinates, not x coordinates. Y will range from negative two to four, even though x will range from like negative one to five or something like that. We wanna make sure we get the y coordinates. The boundary of the integral needs to match the differential, just like the variable we integrate here needs to match this thing right here. Uh, many students sometimes ignore the differential thinking it's very insignificant, but that's not true at all. We actually need that differential to help us. Uh, it, it, first of all, it's a geometric, uh, geometric measurement. It's keeping track of the thickness of our rectangles, but also it helps us make sure we have everything correct inside of our, inside of our function right here. So let's then proceed to integrate. Let's combine some like terms and distribute that negative sign inside of the integral. Uh, so we're going to get integral from negative 2 to 4. Uh, we're going to get negative 1 half y squared uh, plus y. And so the only thing that combines is the constant. We get 1 plus 3. Notice how it's a double negative. We distribute the negative sign there. So we get a 4. And so integrate this by the usual power rule. Uh, we would end up with negative 1 sixth y cubed. So I divided by three, and so since I already had a one half divided by three, it's just times, it's the same thing as just times by one third. So you get one half times a third, which is a sixth. Negative one six y cubed plus y squared over two plus four x, four y, excuse me. Uh, that is a four. There we go. And then we go from negative two to four. And so at this moment, the arithmetic becomes extremely hideous. 
Um, by all means, use a scientific calculator, a calculator of some kind to help you out right here. No one has to be a hero. No one's going to applaud you for your amazing arithmetic abilities here, right? It's number crunching at this moment. Plug in the 4. Uh, so you get 4 cubed, which is 64, plus 4 squared over 2. I forgot to put in the 4. 4 squared over 2. It's 16 over 2. That's going to be an 8. Plus 4 times 4. That's another 16. Um, subtract from that when we plug in the negative 2. Uh, we're going to get positive 8 over 6. Uh, we're going to get positive 4 over 2, and then minus 8. Again, there, there's a lot going on there. This will simplify. I'm not going to bother us with the arithmetic here. You can simplify this a little bit more, uh, in which case this then simplifies to be something like 18. You can double check the arithmetic yourself. Um, the calculus part, of course, is the part we really care about uh, for a class like this. And so we get the area under, uh, area between this curve is going to be 18. All right. Uh, and so we saw in this video how even if they don't tell us the boundary between uh, two curves, we can still identify it by setting the two functions equal to each other and solving it. All right. I'll see you guys next time.